I want to start this morning with a little quiet reflection. So I'm going to ask everyone to just close their eyes for just one minute. And as you close your eyes, I want you to picture this scene with Jesus and his disciples and this young child that he brings into their midst. Just be there and sit there with the disciples, watching what's happening. Watch as Jesus picks up this child and says to all of his disciples, you need to welcome this child. And if you welcome this child, you're welcoming me and not just me, but the one who sent me. Now open your eyes and just stay with that image for just a couple more seconds. Most of the time when we see this, this, this gospel verse printed out or written or drawn about or painted, it creates a very, very peaceful picture, right? We see Jesus picking up a child and holding a child in their midst. And this child is, is almost always well-behaved and being really, really quiet and kind to Jesus. And so it'd probably be pretty easy for any of us, even the disciples you know, who are there when Jesus says, you must welcome you know, one of these children into your midst. And the disciples are going, yeah, we can see that. Look how great that kid is. But I wonder how many of you, when you were visualizing that scene, visualized a real child. A real child who, when they got picked up, went, no! No, put me down! I don't know! And starts kicking Jesus in the shin, right? Because that's not the image we usually think of when we think of Jesus and the children, right? All the children are well-behaved. It's like something out of Lake Wobegon or something. It's like everybody's beautiful and it's all nice and kind, but, but kids, we know, who, all of us who have any contact with any children know that's not how kids act all the time. Sure, when they're asleep. <laughs> But when they're awake and they're running around and they're playing and you interrupt them and you need them to wash their hair, I mean, how many of the images that you had of this kid had a dirty face? How many had disheveled clothes? Again, how many of them were screaming, put me down, I don't want to be held? Now, rethink this scene one more time. The disciples are all sitting around. Jesus picks up this dirty, grungy little child who is screaming at everybody, no, 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 put me down, and Jesus yelling over the child, unless you welcome one of these, you welcome me if you welcome one of these children. And the disciples are like, really? <laughs> That's what we have to deal with? That's what we have to do? That's who we have to welcome? We have to welcome the, 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 the ill-behaved or the tired or those who might be upset, or those who might just be sad. Because the disciples weren't quite getting the message of Jesus today. They really weren't getting it at all. Here's how we know. They're walking down the road. They're just chatting, and Jesus is up there in front of them somewhere. He's walking up there. And, and what they're back there doing is they're like, no, 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 I was closer to him when he healed that blind man. I'm really better at this than you are, Peter. And Peter says, what are you kidding me? I'm the rock. He called me the rock. I'm obviously the greatest. And then Andrew probably said something like, you know, he also called you Satan, you know. And so they start fighting back and forth about who's the greatest disciple of all of them. And that's what they're arguing about. They're arguing about who's the most perfect disciple. Who's the best? Who's the closest to Jesus? So in my mind, it doesn't make sense for Jesus to pick up a well-behaved little child and say, you must be perfect like this little child, and you must be like this kid if you're going to be welcomed, because they all would have said, yeah, I can do that. 
I'm good like that. In fact, I'm, no matter what, what Thomas says, I'm still the greatest. That's what they were arguing about. And so I've been thinking a lot about what does it mean to welcome that person or those people, who are those last people that we don't think are the ones who deserve or should be welcomed, but really they are the first. Because Jesus flips the script on us this morning. He flips it completely and he says those who are first will be last and those who will last will be first. And oftentimes it's because we, like the disciples, are the ones who think we have it all together and we're the first in line. But in reality, we have the most to learn about what the love of Jesus means. Because if you are anything like me, if we're putting ourselves in the position of that little kid that's being picked up in the midst of the disciples, I'm the one who's yelling at Jesus to put me down. I don't like this, Jesus, stop. I don't want to have anything else to do with it. I'm the one kicking, going, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And that's how a lot of us are. Jesus gets a hold of us, and all of a sudden we're like, wait, wait a second. You mean now that my entire life has to change? I'm really not interested in that. I don't want my life to change. I don't want to have to think about what it means to be first and then where I have to be last. I don't want to be the one who puts myself in that position of that little kid with the dirty face who's sad and upset, who gets picked up by Jesus and has made an example to the disciples and the disciples still don't understand. Right? Because we know there's a lot more stories other than this than the disciples still not getting it. I mean, I imagine that they went out, you know, from this place, still continuing their conversation about who was the greatest, because they're hard-headed, just like us. The disciples, they rarely ever get it. They don't even get it when Jesus dies. They don't even believe the people who come back to tell them that he has been resurrected. They have to go see it for themselves, and then they still don't believe it. They're hard-headed. Because they live a human life. They have a life of experience. They have a life of being betrayed. They have a life of people betraying their trust and not loving them the way that Jesus has loved them. Because remember, just as much as lack of sense as Jesus' love makes to us sometimes, it made even less sense to them. Because they were expecting a Messiah who was coming to take over the world with power and strength, to overthrow Caesar, to put down the powerful from their place. And what they got was a Savior who died for them, and who showed them a type of love that they could not understand. Is it any wonder they still wanted to know who was the greatest? Is it any wonder that we do? Is it any wonder that when we come to church, we think we need to have it all together? Right? We, we dress up nicely. We want our kids to be like those really nice kids that we imagined at the beginning of the service. We don't want them to be like wiggling around and saying things out loud and, you know, tearing pages out of the hymnal and things, right? And we're like, oh my gosh, how could you do this? We're in church. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Thank God that we're all here. Because this is where we get to hear the message of coming into this place as messed up as any kid screaming at Jesus to put me down. But we keep coming back. We keep coming back to hear the stories and the messages again. We keep coming back because we need to know over and over and over again, just like the disciples, we need to know those stories. We need to understand again. My guess is that nobody in this room at the beginning of this sermon, when I asked you to close your eyes, imagined a child kicking Jesus. Am I right? Nobody imagined that, right? But isn't that reality? And don't we live in reality? We live with a real Jesus, not just some spirit in the sky. We live with a Jesus who is with us every day, 
when we don't want to be involved and when we do. When we're hurting and in pain and when we're celebrating with joy. Jesus walks with us down all of those paths. And so, yet, even if you are like me, that little kid who gets picked up by Jesus and starts screaming, no, I don't want to do this. Please put me down. I'm not interested. If you're like that, know that Jesus is going to hold you even more closely. Is going to have you right there in his love all the days of your life. And that you are going to get to kick and scream as much as you want. But God's love is never, ever going to let you go. Amen.